Welcome to the Bentley Systems Training Course to learn how to model gravity loads in the RAM Structural System RAM Modeler. Before we model any gravity loads in the RAM Modeler, we will first review the member load criteria from the RAM Manager screen. Through the member load criteria, we can set the code for live load reduction, enter the snow load or roof live load category, enter the roof live load type, and the number of stories for live load reduction. In this video, you will learn how to model superimposed gravity loads in the RAM modeler. All gravity loads imposed on a structure, with the exception of the self-weight, must be applied to the model as a surface loading, line loading, or point loading. Before loads can be assigned to the model, they must first be defined in the property table for each load type. When the loads are laid out, they will be distributed to the supporting framing based on the tributary area and deck orientation of the slab or deck assigned to that level. Each of the superimposed loads that we will apply to the model consists of several gravity load types. The first load type we will define is our dead load, which will include any superimposed dead load on the structure, since we've already told the program to automatically calculate the self-weight. We can also enter the construction dead load, which will be used for pre-composite checks of steel member, and the value of this field must be less than or equal to the dead load you enter. You can also enter your live load, and here you should use your code suggested live loads based on the occupancy of your structure. You can also enter partition loads, and here you should also use your code suggested partition loads if applicable. The partition loads will be applied to the model as live load, but they will not be considered in the live load reduction calculations. You can also enter construction live loads, which will be used for pre-composite checks of steel members, and also this value must be less than or equal to the live load you enter. Finally, you'll also define your mass dead load, and this will be used to calculate your seismic loads in RAM frame. Typically, this would be the dead load of the structure, superimposed dead load, plus a percentage of the live load if required by your local building code. In this exercise, you will learn how to populate the line load property table and also model line loads in plan. To begin, we will go to our layout toolbar and click on the layout loads icon. When this icon is selected, you will see all the tools available to model superimposed gravity loads on your structure. The first four tools represent all of the property tables, and we will select the second tool to access the line loads property table. We will enter our first line load, and we will enter a load that represents our stair construction. We will assume that we've calculated that the dead weight of the stair system will be 0 0.25 kips per foot for dead load, and it'll have a live load of 0 0.5 kips per foot. We will specify this as an unreducible live load, and we'll also enter some mass dead load of, again, 0 0.25 kips per foot. Once we've added all of the appropriate information for our stair line load, we'll go ahead and click Add and add it officially to our property table. We can add as many line load properties that we need for our sample structure, and we will do one more for this exercise. We will create an exterior wall line load. We're going to enter a dead load of 0, a live load of 0, and we'll enter some mass dead load of 0 0.5 kips per foot. This might represent some type of exterior facade of the structure that is maybe ground supported, such as brick, but will still be acting as a mass dead load for the purposes of calculating the seismic loads later on. Once we've entered all of our properties for our line load, we'll go ahead and click Add, and now we have two loads available to be modeled on the structure. Once you are done entering your line load properties, we'll go ahead and click OK. To begin modeling our line loads, we're going to start at the bottom level of the structure and work our way up. So my layout pull-down menu, I'm now going to select my first floor layout. 
Now that I've entered all the appropriate information in my line loads property table, we can see that my layout line loads icon is now available. I'm going to go ahead and click on this and any of the loads that I created in my property table should now be available. On the first floor layout, I'm going to model an exterior wall line load around the entire perimeter of the structure. I'm going to highlight this load and then I could click add to add one area at a time or I also have a whole perimeter command if this is the type of load that should be modeled on the entire perimeter. I'm going to go ahead and click on the whole perimeter button and then for this particular level, since I do have some structure outside the edge of the building, it had a little trouble detecting the slab edge. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And then I'm just going to select one of the exterior walls along grid line 1. Now I can see that it was able to detect the perimeter of the system and model that wall around the edge. Next, I'm going to go to the second floor layout and enter the appropriate loads on that plan. So my layout toolbar, I'm going to use the pull down and select the second floor layout. And then I could just right click to return right back to the previous dialog. The exterior wall line load is still selected. And this time, since I do not have a complete system of perimeter beams, I will need to use the add button instead. Once I click on the add button, I could click with it anywhere within the slab perimeter in order to model this load. So I'll start by clicking on grid intersection G1 and then I'm going to go to C1 and then I'm going to work my way around the perimeter of this structure. Now if I am locating a line load directly on top of a beam or wall, of course the line load is going to be transmitted directly to that structural element. If, however, I am placing the line load, such as here, on just a slab in areas that there is no beam or wall below, then the orientation and layout of the slab will control how that line load is distributed to the supporting structure. Once you have completed modeling the line loads on the second floor plan, we are now ready to work our way up to the third floor plan, again using our pull-down menu. To return to the line load layout mode, I will again just right click in the main window and reselect my load. I am going to do an exterior wall load on the entire perimeter, so I'm going to click the whole perimeter button. Now on this layout, in addition to the exterior wall load, I'm also going to be creating some stair line loads around my opening along grid lines D and D.5. So I'm going to right click to return back to the line load layout mode. I'm going to select the stair option and then I'm going to add it in this area. Now I could either use the add button or the add on beam button and this time I'm going to go ahead and click the add on beam. When I select the add on beam command I can simply just select any beam in the model and it'll apply the load uniformly along the entire length. After you're done modeling all of your line loads on the third floor plan, I can work my way up to my last layout, which is my roof level. I'm going to right click to return back to the previous dialog. I'm going to select the exterior wall load and again apply it to the entire perimeter. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.